Welcome back to What Are Teen Ips with General Disturbance. We've got another double header for you uh, today. This video features Sly Meerkat, yes the guy who actually owns a pair of meerkats. And in the first video he's on the VK3601H, which is the tier 6 German heavy tank built by Henschel, the 36 ton tank. One of their development tanks on the way to the Tiger. Okay, game on. Now I'm pretty sure that's the 88mm gun, we'll just check this out. Yes it is the 88, it's got alpha of 220 and it penetrates 145mm armor with standard shells with the APCR it goes up to 194. Now this tank actually has the ability to load the 75mm gun and also the 10.5cm gun which, uh, or I shouldn't say 75cm gun because it's actually 7.5 centimeters yes get them get them right and there is another 7.5 centimeter gun you can actually have which is slightly more powerful that's a tier 7 gun so he's on the airfield map he spawned and he's leading the charge towards the enemy now this tank doesn't really have very good armor and you have to angle very well like a diamond if you're going to make the best use of that armor to stop the enemy penetrating you but uh, it does have a fairly good gun with a fairly good alpha although it is poor on accuracy now it was only one of the design development stages on the way to the tiger and of course it does carry that 88 so yes it's part of the way there they built eight chassis to try this one out and one prototype but it wasn't accepted because the armor was too weak and of course it wasn't what they were after now so far he's held the enemy up on this corner oh got the ass of a KDA 5 puts around in it's a low roll for 201 and if he stays like that he will take another round I think Although he's trying to get a solution, there you go, he's got it, and he gets that one in as well. That KB-85 is going to be out of the game momentarily if that's not careful. Now you do have to watch out, oh yes he gets him. You'd have to watch out going around this corner because you are a prime target for the tank destroyers right at the back. I know because I've played this position. Oh he gets a lovely round into the T-150. And he pops out for another one. Nope, didn't get it that time. The standard reload is 6.62 seconds. And he's got 5.82. Tries to go for the commander's hatch. It's quite a biggie, isn't it, there? Didn't get it, and the target was killed before he could get the shot in. 45 TP takes a round. Okay, yes, he's got past that gap. Now he's got an ARL 44 to deal with, and he should be able to take the guy out with two shots. Yeah, or oh, one shot actually, because he rammed him to death with the rest. Now he's actually being shot at by the Super Hellcat above him, and there's the 45 TP up there who probably wants some revenge. In fact, they both pull back because they know that they might get an 88 round into them. And he's almost like tempting them to come down. You know, come on down! You don't get a free car, well it's not the price is right. But you might be wiped out when you do, because that is a steep cliff. But the, the, they don't want to leave that spot, do they? And he swings the gun around just a little too late, but yep, gets the Super Hellcat instead. And, oh, he's taking rounds from a Skoda T25 now. And an FL10, this is not good. Yep, not good, because those are autoloaders. And... Uh, well, both of them got 75mm guns. He puts a round into an SU-100 who misses. And now he's going to try and get around into the M4. Yes, he does. Okay. He's going to try and get another one into that guy. But he's ready. And remember, it is an autoloader. He puts a round near the Skoda. <coughs> Excuse me. And Skoda gets one back in revenge, but he puts one into him. Skoda can't afford to do that forever. Okay, the FL-10 has been killed. He was killed by the T-150 on our team. And we're now trying to outflank that uh, Skoda and get round behind him. 
Well, it's going to be a bit of a problem. It's quite a long drive, and it's a good job he did go over the edge because the enemy SU-152 was behind him, but that guy's been killed. Our Hellcat saw to him. Okay, Skoda's about to come around the corner. Or is he? Yes, he is. Hello! A <laughs> Good shot. And he's out the game. Now it's the IS and we've got his ass. Oh, it didn't pen! He's got a big ass. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's very strong. He puts one into the engine bay instead. And the kill shot goes to the Tiger... Oh, no, it wasn't the Tiger P. Or was it? Yes, it was the Tiger P. Okay, there's only one enemy remaining. It's a Panther. And it looks like he's AFK and he's around the back of the map. Or is he moving? No, it's just us that's moving relative to him. He's still near the spawn point and the Hellcat's got him, so there's no chance of us getting a kill on that one. Which is a pity. Slides up to four kills. But I don't think he's going to get a chance, no, because the Hell Panther will die to the SU-100, I think, actually. He's going in for a ram. Or did he get it? No, he didn't get it. And the kill shot does go to the Hellcat after all. So the first game is over and it is a victory. Let's have a look at the second battle. The second battle features the Skoda T25. Yes, we saw one of those in the last battle. Uh, it does have a big ass. Game on. Okay, we're on the glacier map this time, south spawn. This tank has a 75 millimeter gun. And it's capable, it's an autoloader with three shots. It's capable of firing out three shots, doing 110 alpha in, I think it's uh, 1.1 seconds between each shot. 1.3 seconds between each shot. That's what um, Sly Meerkat's got. He's gone for the center line because obviously you can shoot at the enemy tanks they're making their way up onto the aircraft carrier. He's got one already, two shots into a Super Hellcat who came up onto the, right onto the center line which is asking for trouble. And he stopped there to take a shot at somebody else but didn't realize there was an autoloader sitting right in front of him. And I think now he's probably feeling a bit peeved. In fact, he's running away and he's just allowed Sly to put three more rounds into him for another 351 hit points, but the enemy T... No, it's the DS Prince and a Cromwell were having two shots at him from a distance away. Oh, going for the T-78. Gets... No. He did get spotting, but none of his shots actually hit the target. Now, he needs to watch out because there are a couple of enemy tanks over there. A T-67 and, of course, that DS Prince. The ones that hit him and the Cromwell. Whoa, 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 running into his Jackson. And that guy's a good player because he's got two high calibers. See the arcing shells arcing through. Now, this is an interesting spot to fire from. Now, he can use the gun depression over the side of the vehicle. And he spotted a KV-222 who's decided to stick near the gap. Instead, he's putting rounds into an M10 RBFM. Gets a kill. Nice. Did take a round from the M10, so it's an exchange, but he is out the game now. And that KV-222 is probably still there. Bit strange that, because he should have gone to the northwest corner, and he didn't. Which kind of makes me think that, well, none of our guys have gone up that corner either. But it does mean the enemy is vulnerable from that flank. There he is. There's the enemy OI. He is making his way to that corner. Did he get a shot? I think that first shot was a bit premature. Pop the reload. Yep. Standard reload is uh, 7.67 seconds. He's got 7.26, so he is quite fast. Oh, just lost the ELC. Can he get shots into this budgie? Yes, he can. And he gets a kill. And puts the last shell into the OI. Enemy RT is paying attention now, so he needs to move somewhere else. We know that there's a Super Hellcat on the enemy team around the northwest corner been spotted by our super chappy but Sly's not interested in that I think he's more interested and more concerned about the enemy tanks maybe over on the west side of the cap uh, of the uh, battlefield so the west side no the east side of the battlefield let's get it right the Hellcat on our team has moved around the corner to find that super Hellcat and he's found him right up against the wall so obviously and he's a one-shot as well 
So he could be out the game momentarily, and he is. Okay, so there's only that OI, but with two tanks working on that OI, should be able to take him down. Hellcats move to the corner. He's found the OI. Okay, the OI is looking at him. Now, the way to do this would be for one of us, preferably Sly, to go all the way down that side and then shoot him in the ass when he pops out. Um, and then, obviously, he's going to be totally focusing on the Hellcat. Good, he's going to do this. Good, excellent. This should work. He's loaded premium ammo. Hello! It's... <laughs> yes, he's turned his turret the wrong way. Mind you, he's going to back up against the wall. Now, this is where the gun depression on the OI really lets them down. And he's pumping rounds in. His teammates are turning up to finish him off. And he can just keep under the gun depression of the OI. There's nothing he can do. And there you go. He's gone. Well done. Good teamwork. That's how you do it. You take on a huge tank like that with solid armour. And you just totally troll them by getting underneath their gun depression whilst they're busy with somebody else. And the guy turned his turret the wrong way, which is a big mistake. So Sly's now going back to the cap area, but that's because there are still enemy tanks on the east side of the map. He's not interested in going to the cap because he knows there's that KV-220 there. And there's also a Type 64 somewhere along the way, and that's quite a good sniping tank. In many ways, much like the, uh, the Hellcat, but it is a Hellcat turret on anti-aircraft chassis. You can still see that KV-220's there. In fact, now he's going to go up onto the aircraft carrier and see if he can get some sniping shots in himself. He has loaded... Okay, this is where it gets dicey trying to climb up this uh, slope. It's very slippery, but it's also dicey because if you pick the wrong spot, the enemy can get shots at you fairly easily. Now he's decided he's going to go back down. And he's actually going to shoot from the other side of the carrier at the enemy tanks that are on their way into our cap. This is an interesting decision. Yep, they're fairly close, but he needs somebody to spot them, and they're outside view range, so he can't do it. So, whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, I think he turned too quickly there. Maybe he was distracted by a meerkat fighting on his lap, but yeah, gave me a heart attack there almost for a second. Moving to support your position. Okay, he's going to help the Hellcat, I think. That KV-220 is still there, but we can't see the Type 64. The Hellcat's made a bit of a difficult move there because he's gone way up on there and he could fall off that and die if he's not careful. In fact, he probably will. But instead, Sly's decided he's going to go off the carrier. I think that Hellcat's about to take a slide to oblivion. Okay, there's the T-78. He's hiding in the bushes behind that rock, so there's not a lot we can do there. We still don't know where the Type 64's gone. We know there's a 45 TP and a Panther. There's the Panther. Have we got shots? No, probably... Oh, yes we have. Just. Just the top. I think that Jackson's angling for a nice little shot in his butty. I should say butt, actually, not butty, but... I think that 45 TP's butt's about to be wiped. Yep, it's telling the Jackson not to do that. Get to a position where you can actually crossfire. Oh, didn't work out so well, but he can get a shot in here on one of them. Probably the Jackson, uh, the Panther brother. Yep, goes into the Coppola and... Does he get the kill? No. You can shoot through the snow, actually. I, this is something that a lot of people don't realise. Even if you, um, if you could just see the Coppola... Uh, even if the snow's in the way, sometimes you can actually get the shot through and, oh, narrowly missed the shell there from the enemy gorilla. And the 45 TP goes down. He did get the kill. 
I think he was distracted there for a brief moment by an SU-122A shell. And here's the enemy griller. Oh God, he's trying. <laughs> he's very trying. And we know the panther's somewhere around here. There he is. He's hiding in the bushes. Time to go. And he's dead too. And it's the SU-122A again. And he got the patrol duty out of that one, I think. So he's still got half his hit points. And the enemy RT fired. Oh, ouch. That hurt. He was within the blast radius of the gorilla. 141 hit points lost. Yeah. He's a good gorilla player. In fact, both the SU-122 player and the gorilla are very, very good players because they've managed to put shells in places that they shouldn't be able to. And there goes the enemy Type 64, which means now that the only things we're going to worry about are the KB-220, their Type T-78, and their gorilla. I think I'd be more frightened of that gorilla player because he is rather good. And the T-78, well, he's got the 90mm gun. I think the best thing for Sly to do would be to go up on the ring road. Oh, he's got the griller. One shot to kill shot. Yes! Well, the griller's out of the way, and that explains why he was getting shots where he shouldn't have been getting them, because he was actually not in the bushes or the trees. He was actually further out. And, of course, um, he took the risk to do that so he could get the shots at long range. Now, Sly needs to go up onto the ring road to take out that T-78, because going up on the ring road is probably the only way that he can get round without the T-78 seeing him. And he might need to get shots on the KB-220 at the same time. Okay, he's loaded the premium ammo, but he's only got eight shots left. And the T-78's not in the bushes. He is actually down on the ice at the moment, which means we're going for the KB-220 first shot remember this is a tier 7 hull you need to aim for the turret he's letting the auto load go in he's staying where he is that's better through the sights and again and again one more clip the guy's not even responding he's got a 76 millimeter gun and there's the kill shot okay that's he's only got one round of premium ammo left so he's actually loading a clip of standard but he doesn't need it because it's a victory here's the end of battle results starting with the vk 3601h on airfield it was an ace tanker game for slime meerkat in the vk he managed to get a hand of gold for surviving the battle having received damage from four different enemy tanks a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits he managed to get six and the duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him he also got a fighter badge because he got at least four kills and he got four exactly and a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle this battle was over very quickly because he was so aggressive in it normally most people aren't so aggressive in the vk 3601h because well it's fairly weak on the armor but it does have a very good gun and he was using the gun to good effect let's have a look at team score and see where he was well you can see in this game he actually got the highest damage in the game but no high caliber because he didn't get 20 percent of the enemy hit pool 2404 hit points of damage the next high scorer being the m18 hellcat with 1985 followed by the tiger p with 1750 when it came to kills, he had the highest number of those with four kills. Three kills went to the Tiger P and the 45 TP Habitcher. And when it came to base XP, yeah, he's got the top in that one as well. So top in all three columns. 1,311 base experience points to him. 901 went to the Hellcat and 888 went to the Tiger P. He fired 17 rounds in this game, got 14 direct hits and 12 penetrations. Damage of 2,404 hit points, of which 227 were at more than 300 meters, so the majority of the damage was done at close range. Nine hits received from the enemy, five penetrations. Yes, the armor on this tank was so weak, that's one of the reasons why it was rejected in the end. Four non-penetrations, mostly hitting the tracks, and one hit by way of splash damage as well. 565 hit points of damage blocked by armor. One enemy vehicle spotted, nine enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, and 872 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 32,640 credits, and after repair and ammunition resupply, took away 41,156 credits profit. And he earned 1,311 XP, but took away 1,967. There's something obviously missing in here, just as there is up here. 
but we won't know about it. But uh, yes, uh, a fairly comfortable game, but over very, very quickly in the VK3601H. So let's have a look at the second battle, and that was the one on Glacier. And in that one, that was also an ace tanker for Sly Meerkat. He got a Hand of God again for getting at least, uh, or receiving damage from four different enemy tanks. A Bruiser Medal for getting at least five critical hits, he got eight. A Duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. And a Fire for Effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. In this one, he did get the high caliber because he did the most damage in the game. And because he picked up six kills when he took out the uh, KB-220, he actually got a Top Gun. And I missed out on that during the actual commentary because I was so focused on where was that T-78. So I was worried he might pop up at any moment and put a round into Sly. Anyway, let's have a look at the team score and see where he was. Highest damage again with 2,910 hit points. This time the second highest was the budgie on his own team, 1349. And the third highest damage was the OI with 1,224. When it came to kills, it was uh, Sly with six kills. Three kills went to the budgie and also to the T-78 on the enemy team. That's why I was worried about him because he was quite a dangerous player. He was quite good and very accurate. And uh, two kills went to the OI and the 45TP Abitra on the enemy team and their Cromwell. When it came to base XP, yes, he's got the top in all three columns again. 1,616 uh, XP in this game. 702 to the uh, Super Hellcat and 663 to the Budgie. I was saying, it's, it's not a, it's that, that's the Super Chappy, not the Super Hellcat. What am I talking? Uh, I thought for a second, yeah, the M24, that's not a Super Hellcat. <laughs> um... 663 to the budgie. Let's have a look at the detail. 40 shots fired, 35 direct hits, 30 penetrations, damage of 2,910 hit points, of which 880 were at more than 300 meters. He did a lot more long range shooting in the Skoda. It is actually quite a stable platform for that 75mm gun. Five hits received, three penetrations, one non-penetrations, and two hits by wear splash damage. The Gorilla was very accurate. And as for the penetrations, well, the Skoda does have fairly thin armour. It's basically a, a development of the T-24 Skoda. Um, and the Germans thought it was a bit outdated, but considering it was developed in 1942, which is the same time as they were developing the VK-3601H, it's and they were desperate for tanks to fight the t-34s it's surprising they didn't ask skoda to actually start manufacturing them en masse but i suppose they wanted skoda to actually develop other things instead he blocked damage of 115 hit points he spotted seven enemy vehicles damaged nine of the enemy killed six and did 947 hit points of spotting assist so he just missed out on there on getting a uh, spotter medal 37,303 credits on a premium count and after repair ammunition respawn yes he did use a lot of premium ammo in this game he needed to on some of those targets he actually ended the game on a loss of 13,058 credits if you wonder what that noise was yes that was me trying to get my glasses uh 1,616 xp times two for the first victory 4848 experience points altogether so yep the skoda is actually quite a decent tank i put it alongside the cromwell in its effectiveness because it's quick it's agile it's got a nice gun with that auto loader uh it's very effective actually the the cromwell has it on reloaded shot by shot i think as dpm the cromwell b is much better but um i think the skoda is a fun tank to play uh as for the vk well I'm glad that that experience was over for me once I'd actually got through it because I don't want to go back to it again. But it was a good game by Sly in the VK and uh, congratulations at least for getting an ace tanker. I hope you enjoyed both those replays. If you did, please give our video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Please um, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. <laughs> Thank you for watching.